No vídeo de hoje, nós começamos com uma tabela de hidratação. Será que eu estou hidratado? Procure urinar claro pelo menos 10 vezes por dia. Coma uma dieta rica em frutas e vegetais frescos. Beba um litro de água antes das refeições. Obrigada. Hum. Bananas. Organic bananas. About 1,500 calories of organic banana mashed in here. About 100 grams of organic coconut sugar. Blend it with water. Nice and sweet. Nice and sweet. Just have a look at that. The, the visceral fat there. <laughs> and this is fully hydrated, carbed up. I haven't taken some diuretic pills or done any starvation diets or whatever. I'm lean all year long. You can always see my jawbone of varying degrees. My face is always chiseled all year long. Why is that? It's because all year long I eat the same foods. I don't cut my calories or bulk or whatever. I just eat, eat as much as I fucking want every meal. Okay, cut to the chase. There was a recently thing on BBC. Sugar versus fat. Sugar versus fat. Can you share your comments and criticisms, Harley? Basically what it was, it was, pretty, it was pretty sort of fun, pretty objective sort of thing. It was basically two guys, two identical twins, both medical doctors, physicians, whatever you want to call them. Identical twins. One was given a, a fat diet, just pure animal products. No vegetables, nothing. Pure animal product, you know, dead cow, chicken, pig, fish, butter, fat, grease, body fat of animals, milk, etc. And that's where he's told to live on for 30 days a month. His other twin, identical twin, was told to eat a, a very low fat, like a McDougal style. I'm not sure if it was vegan. I couldn't see any animal product on there, but there was no oil, there was no avocado, it was just sugar, fruit, vegetables, grains, potatoes, etc. So I'm pretty sure it looked like a McDougal diet, but I'm not sure if it's vegan or not. Anyway, after 30 days, what happened is the, the high fat guy, he was starting to, he was pre-diabetic. His insulin resistant, resistance went through the roof and his brother, his insulin sensitivity went through the roof. So he became more insulin efficient and the high fat guy was pre-fucking diabetic <coughs> after just one month. So it's crazy there. It's crazy how quickly high fat diets will give you diabetes. But a lot of people in the paleo problem world, they, they never test their blood sugars. They're like, oh, I'm feeling great. I feel really stable. But they don't show their blood tests, do they? Or they do like some dodgy shit. Or they go, oh yeah, I've been, like Peter Atia reckons he's been doing ketosis for the last fucking 10 years. He reckons he's 10% body fat. I'll tell you what, Peter, if you can see your abs like you can see mine and your jawbones like mine, I'll give you $100,000. But you fucking can't. You're not 10% body fat, bro. You're more like 40% body fat. You look like a bald Santa Claus. Not hating, just saying. And your athletic performance, you don't have any. You're not even on Strava. You don't even use a power meter. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck are you talking about, bro? You're like, you, you, you flip a, a little fucking... You go to the gym and you put a... A weight, pick it up over here, put it over there, and you call that athletic performance. I'm sorry, mate. It isn't. It's fucking pitiful. You don't keep... Right, anyway, I'll go on about that. But uh, So we have these twins, all right? Debunking all the, all, the, all the nonsense out there in just 30 days. It's pretty cool. But then at the end of it, they're like, well, this is just two of us. We're, you know, we're not too sure. You know? They're, they're so, like, addicted to their fucking bacon and egg lifestyle or whatever. They're like... Well, you know, it's like two twins. One fucking smokes for a month. One doesn't fucking smoke for a month. The guy's coughing up black shit after a month. His doctor's saying, you've got to stop this. And then they get to the end of the study and go, well, you know, like cigarettes, maybe they're good, maybe they're bad. We don't know. Like, where, like, how the fuck do you pass medical school, do all that fucking study, and you can't fucking see the basics? I'm not a fucking academic by any means. I failed year 12, but I have enough wisdom to see bullshit when I see it and see truth when I see it. Logic. You don't really learn logic in, in university, do we? If we did, these people wouldn't be like making these mistakes. And it's just crazy. It is just crazy. Another thing they did is they got the twins to do like mental function tests, stockbroke work, 
And the guy in the high carb diet was just like smashing it. The guy in the low carb diet, the high fat diet, was just like all cloudy thinking. And he's an academic, so he should be able to grasp it. His twin brother did, but he couldn't do it. So what he needed to do is probably take some modafinil, like bulletproof exec Dave Aspie recommends. Modafinil is basically speed. It's like you got speed and you got modafinil. Modafinil is like <laughs> just like fucking hyper-focused drug. Yeah, fuck shit up. It's an anti-narcolepsy drug. But that's what all the paleo primal low carbers take to function. <laughs> so they, they take speed to function. And they say, oh, I feel really clear because my diet. Get off the fucking speed and see how you perform. And you'll it'd be like this twin who can't do shit on this high fat diet. Another test they did was stamina. They got one of the, the guy like Nigel Mitchell from Team Sky, one of the nutritionist guys. They put him on, did some blood lactate testing, put him on the identical bikes, do an identical warm up. And then they went, did a little time trial of a hill. Guess who fucking won? The high carb brother smashed his fucking low carb brother out of the fuck off the fucking hill. Uh, but then went box hill in Surrey. It's just, it's just like, but then at the end of the month, the twins are like, well, you know, like we're not really too sure. Like, <laughs> just fucking insane. But hey, people with brains and wisdom will be able to sing it. Wow, that makes sense. That's what all. Doing right at McDougal and all those people have been saying for fucking years. And then you go and travel. Travel, people. Fucking travel. Get the fuck out of America. Get the fuck out of Australia. Go to Asia. Go to Uganda. Go to Thailand. Bring your fucking bicycle. Get in your wheelchair and go to the villages. Go to the villages where they look at you like, what the fuck are you doing here? You're welcome, but why the fuck would you come to our little village? No Westerner comes here. No tourists come here. Why are you here? You're welcome, but like, whoa! Go to those villages. If, if the whole village doesn't look at you like, you're in the wrong place. And then go and see what they eat. Watch what the really skinny people eat. It's fucking rice. It's potato. It's bananas. It's fucking sugar. It's water. It's sugary drinks even. Sugar cane juice. Maybe even fucking Pepsi. But it's a lot of sugar, sugar, sugar. High carb and low fat. Very lim limited animal product. Not by choice, but by necessity. Rice is about a dollar per 3,000 calories all around the world. Half the world's population lives on less than $2 a day. So if you only got $2 a day, you can't afford fucking KFC. You can't afford a steak. You can't afford milk. You can afford rice. You can afford as much fucking rice as you want. Unless you're in like a full-on famine place. But not, don't go to famine places to do this little study. Go to places where people can work, they've got enough food, they've got enough money for the basics. They're not starving. They're just forced, they're forced to eat rice, fruit, vegetables, water, coconut water, whatever. They're forced to do that. They don't have any option. And are they fat? Are they fucking fat like all these people, these low carbers pretend? They're not. They're fucking looking like me. They're looking lean. They're looking fucking lean. The women look amazing, just slim physiques. You can't tell from behind if they're 18 or fucking 40. Because they're just like slim. You don't, you don't see that in Australia, really. You know, like It's very, very rare to see an Australian or a US lady or even European these days who's over 40 or 50 or 60 and who's slim. My mum's clinically obese. It's not fucking genetics on this lean, people. It's dietary fucking choices. It's not training. It's not starving. Because I know plenty of people out there who train way fucking more than me, and they're still fat, they've still got a belly. Doesn't make them bad people. I'm just saying. You can't say, I'll do it already train. No, 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 no. I'll go crazy in January, maybe. But you look at my videos in when I'm doing 600Ks a month in, in winter or whatever. People are like, that's a lot of training. No, no, it's fuck all training. Look at the people who are doing. There's a guy in Switzerland who did 91,000 kilometers. He's still got a gut. He was as tubby at the start as the end. There's a guy who cycled around the world, Mark Beaumont, 100 fucking miles a day on average for 200 days, roughly. He looked on the YouTube. He's fatter at the end than at the start. What happened? He was a vegetarian when he started. And then he, after about a week of riding, got so fucking hungry, he just ditched his vegetarian values and started eating meat. <clears throat> it ballooned up, man. How the fuck do you weigh more at the end of a fucking epic year like that than at the start? How do you do it? Animal products, high-fat diets. You can do all the fucking exercise you want, man. It ain't going to fucking burn it off. It ain't going to burn it off. You have to change your fucking diet. So that's my little tank, my little rant. 
sub 10 minute BBC sugar versus fat the twins episode just go and travel you know like if you got doubts and if I'm wrong I'll you send me your fucking bill I'll pay your airfares I'll pay your accommodation I'll pay your bicycle I'll fucking pay everything if you can fucking show me a village in a non-starving place who is fat, everyone's fucking looks like Australians, us as Aussies, fat as fuck, 67% of Australia's overweight or obese. The rest of us are yet to get there. <laughs> if you can show me those fat village of fucking high carbers, I'll pay everything you, it took for you to get there. So go to China, Uganda, Kenya, Ethiopia, Korea, you know, uh, Indonesia, Sumatra areas, uh, New Guinea, except just go to all these little places, look up on the map, highest carb intakes, and then you look up their fucking body mass index. It's a fucking no-brainer, but academics still can't fucking get it. Why is that? Because they're addicted to eating their shit. Yeah. The biggest thing people fear is change. You can you can turn a Muslim into a Christian fucking like that. You can turn a Christian into a Muslim and Muslim... You can do that. You can get people changing their churches or whatever. Boom! You get one someone changing their fucking diet, that is the hardest fucking thing ever. <laughs> you got you got more chance of going into a Muslim or a Christian church preaching opposite whatever than you go, going into a fucking a steakhouse and saying, everyone should be a vegan. They'll fucking chase you with knives down the street. <laughs> That's just the world we live in. Once we understand that, we can understand why there's so much resistance to change. Fortunately, people are motivated by aesthetics. People want to get lean. People want to get fucking lean. They want to see their fucking abs. They want to see their cheekbones. And that's why high-carb vegan diet is easy to promote because people want that aesthetics. Most people take steroids and starve themselves or do gastric bypass or liposuction. But that never fucking works long-term, does it? I know. Look at Kirstie Alley. Done. 